What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Toothpicks. Guess what, we're gonna be doing some of my favorite barbecue today. I've done a video like this in the past, but you know, as time goes on, things change. I'm doing some 44 Farms big old beef ribs. Stay tuned, this is gonna be fun. All right, now look at these. I got some good old 44 Farms beef ribs. These guys out of Cameron, Texas. What I've decided to do, pick up a couple things from my Meat Church barbecue supply here over in Wasahatchee. And I saw these gorgeous beef ribs. Now these are certified Black Angus choice. Look at the marbling in that. I mean, you know that's gonna be good. Good fat content. And we're gonna be smoking these over oak today. So the first thing you wanna do, and before I even show you anything, let me show you what I'm using. I got my good old brisket rub I made up. Got some black pepper, got some coarse um, kosher salt, a little bit of celery seed in there for smoke. Then I got this whiskey bent barbecue, the grind dry rub. I tasted this, this is a coffee blend. I think that's gonna go great on beef. We're gonna put that on there. And for a binder, instead of mustard, we're going with the sriracha hot sauce. This is not gonna really make nothing hot at all. It's just a binder. And that's all just a loud to rub to stick. So let's go ahead and show you what we're gonna do. So we got, you know, beef ribs usually come in about three or four bones. This is the plate ribs. So they're much meatier, kind of like chuck roast, actually from the chuck roast side of the cow. And what you wanna do first, you see all this fat on the top? You know, I'm not gonna go too crazy with it, but I wanna get some of it off. So you wanna fat, not a fat, you wanna um, good old sharp knife. Get some of this off, cause it's not gonna render too well. We want everything, we want our smoke. The penetrate now some of this silver skin is kind of hard so you're gonna have to go under this and get that off and it should peel back Let's see if i can peel some of this off Okay, now some stuff you might not be able to get right off the bat. So I'm taking my knife. I'm trying not to go too deep. And get a lot of this silver skin off over on all around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this up a little bit. It's gonna take a little time and then we'll come back and we'll season it. All right, so I got these beef ribs trimmed up about as much as I can take without taking off too much meat. Try not to butcher it too much, but some of that silver skin is pretty hard to get off, but it looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and turn these over. And I got a glove on one hand, a clean hand for this for my uh, seasonings. And so I'll, now this has a membrane on the back. Now, unlike pork ribs, you do not have to peel this off. Actually, if you do, your meat is actually gonna fall off the bone on the grill. So by keeping this on, it keeps you and your meat, keeps your meat intact on it. So I don't really have to season the side, but I like to season everything. So I'm gonna put a little sriracha down, rub that in on the back. Do the same for the other side. While I'm here, put some sriracha on the sides. all the way around just for this side so I can go ahead and season it at the same time get a good rub in now this is going to add some packing flavor now I'm going to take my regular brisket rub and use it as a base on the bottom because you know I don't know how you, I like to kind of suck on the bones a little bit on the back side with the seasoning. And you don't have to go too crazy on this side right here. I'm not even gonna hit this side with the coffee rub. I'm just gonna hit this side with the, the salt and pepper. Okay, and you don't wanna rub this in, even though it's called rub. You rub it in, you take, it won't look uniform. It's gonna look uneven and everything. Now I got that right here. And while I'm up, let's go ahead and hit the sides. 
A lot of people just put it on the top, not me. I like to hit all sides of the meat. It's gonna be good. I'm trying to tell you I love beef ribs. It's like brisket on a stick. Go ahead and get this other one. This one's a little bit bigger. Now, the, the, you know, beef prices they have went up here, especially here in Texas. I think maybe around four, almost five dollars a pound, depending on what you're getting. All right, so now I'll turn these over. We're gonna hit the other side with the brisket rub. And I'll stay about maybe six inches from the top. Try to get an even coating. If you go too close, you only hit one spot. Get a good, now these, this beef is thick. Get a good coating on there, okay? This will give us a great bark. Oh, you know what I forgot, guys? Guess what I forgot? Sriracha. Now, <laughs> I, like I said on this channel, we like to keep it real. I'm not even going to edit that out. Put it on top. I already put some on this side, but I got to put it on here anyway. And we'll just put some more. Okay. Probably don't even need any more, but I'll hit it with a little bit. Just to give it help the binder of the other rub. But for slipping. But that's barbecue. Correct your mistakes. And I'm able to correct it right here. All right. Give it a little more coat. I already got some on there. So I'll just give it a little more. Okay. Now over here, yeah, we're going to load up. And on this the shaker, kind of shake it up a little bit to keep it mixed up well. Okay. Now, that's done right here. I'm going to take the coffee rub, right? It's going to start on the sides. Hit it with the coffee rub. I want to get this on here good. Now, for that, instead of rubbing, just pack it in, okay? Or you can use a little technique like this, kind of do the sides and pack it in. A lot of times, you know, that's a little small size, so we'll just take it up. Kind of do that for brisket when I'm doing it. Okay. Pack whatever's in. And now we're going to come across the top. It smells like coffee. Yeah, it smells good, too. Mm -hmm. It smells real good. I remember... Uh, a couple years ago, I went to a Whole Foods market and they had a barbecue place in here. Yeah, Whole Foods with a barbecue place here in Texas. And they had some coffee brisket. And I have it was so good. I don't know what they did, but it's the, I think it was a coffee rub. So I love this coffee rub. It's going to remind me of that. Pack that in right there. Should add for some great flavor today. Put this on the other side, get that. When, when you bite, see, I, you kind of, I kind of visualize when I'm eating. When I bite into this for somebody else, I got that side already. With somebody else, I want them to taste that flavor and that crunch in every bite from all around, no matter where they're eating the ribs from. Get a good coat on there. Hit the edges and all the way around. It's not going to hurt. This, there's so much meat on here. Not going to hurt. Okay, and I think that's about it. I'm going to set this, take it working from the bottom so I won't mess up my rub. Let this sit out for about 20 minutes. While we're doing that, I got the smoker rolling. Show you what I did outside, explain that, and we'll put these on. Meet me outside. All right, so we're outside on the patio. I got my Weber Summit charcoal going, and I got this up to 275, because I want to smoke between 250 and 275. You can even do about 300 with the fat content that's in these, but we're going to try to stick it to 275. Have nothing else, no devices going on. I'm going to do this old school without any control temps. So what I basically did is I took 
some charcoal, put it on the bottom, took some unlit charcoal in the chimney. I put that in there and lit it up, put some oak all around it. Then put my uh, diffuser plate on there, put a water pan in there, brought everything up to temp, and it, this is what we got. All right, so let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Ooh-wee. So I'm going to set these beef ribs. I'm going to just set them side by side. Well, not even side by side. Let's just put them like this, opposite of each other. Let's put them like that. Now, I want to be able to see this good just for filming purposes. So the other ones I'll kind of put a bit like that, just so we can see it kind of over the water pan. Let me go ahead and turn this other one so I can, there we go, most of everything stay over the water pan. And that's about it. I'm going to come back after about two hours and I'll check it, see what it looks like, and I'll spray it, keep the moisture on there. I got a little apple cider vinegar and um, water with a little bit of hot sauce in it, and I'll spray this maybe every hour and a half, two hours. Let's go ahead and get it closed, let it smoke. All right, guys, so check this out. It's been rolling about three hours. Let's just let's see where it's holding there, guys. Almost a little about 275 right there. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Oh, man. Look at those beef ribs. It's already starting to come back off those bones. Oh, that looks so good. Ooh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Go ahead and take the temperature real quick at the thickest part. Let's see what we got. 179. Okay. Let's go over here, guys. Thickest part. 183. All right. So I think these got a little more time. I'm not going to even going to wrap these guys. We're just going to spray them down. Keep that moisture in there. I want a good bark on these. I think that's good enough. We'll close it for a, you know a couple more hours. And really, what you're doing, you're just testing, you know, your probe. Even though I'm going by temp, but just I wanted to go like butter all the way through, even the membrane. So let's go ahead and give this a close. Let our temperature come up, and we'll come back out here and check it. Should be uh, about ready to rest when we come back. All right, guys. So it's time to look at these beef ribs we're gonna go ahead let me get my thermometer over here got my thermo pan ready so let's go ahead and take a look at them and wow look at that bark let me get real close those I know those got to be done guys so I want to take tip I'm looking for a little above 200 and let's see how this goes in with the thermo pan there it is 202, 203, perfect. Let's get this other one over here. 204. Now I'm going to take these off and I'm going to wrap them in some butcher paper and let them sit over in my Cambro Fox box for about an hour so they can sweat a little bit and get tender. But if you wanted to, you can let these cool for about 15 minutes or a little bit. Cut them because the fat content is real high. But uh, I'm going to let them rest just like I do brisket, but shorter time. All right, so join me inside while I rest them.
All right, so I got these beef ribs out here, and we're gonna, they're about done. Look at that bark. Oh man, that's crispy right there. Juice coming out of there. I'm gonna pick these up very carefully so they won't fall apart. And I'm gonna put them right here on the middle of my cutting board. And I'm gonna fold over once, okay? And I'm gonna fold over one, get my, fold that over. Okay, and then you just kind of crease it down, kind of tuck it real tight, fold it once, tuck it, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold it one more time, just like that, and then do the other one like that. This one's kind of coming apart a little bit on the back side. Kind of, we want to kind of put it in the middle, like I said. Fold over. We get a little more for it. Hold on. There we go. Fold over. Thank you, babe. I got my helper. Fold the other one over. Get all flat and tuck it. And I'm just resting these, so just want to make sure you tuck it in when you push it back. And then give it another fold, and it should be meat side up. I'm gonna take these, put them in my little Cambro box, let them rest for about an hour, and we'll come back out here and cut them. All right, so it is time to show these big old beef ribs off. Let's go ahead and grab one. I think my big one right here, I'm gonna grab it right here. Let's get ready, set this down, open this butcher paper, and they've been setting maybe an hour and a half. A little, went over an hour a little bit. Ooh, look at that. Big old beef ribs. Look at, just, just, look at it. That's tender right there. I could probably go in there with my hand and peel that off. Right there. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay. But we're going to take these out right here. I'm going to set it to the side. And I'm going to grab my other one and open it real quick. Looking good. And you can see with beef ribs, of course, you have a little shrinkage with all of them. Right there. Now, it wouldn't be big beef ribs without using a big knife. Got my Dow Strong Gladiator Series knife. And we're gonna take this, uh oh, look at that. Now that's tender, already. Turn it around, and we're gonna look at that. Heaven, that's heaven right there. Big old beef ribs. Look at that nice little smoke ring. Juice. Look at all the juice coming out of it. That is glorious right there. And I know we got a piece missing from the other one. Set those right there. I'm going to cut these babies up. Try not to. It's so tender. It's coming apart. Nice, juicy. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, we got a taste tester. Mm -mm. That looks so good. Now, I got to give this a try, guys. Okay. Now, I'm going to take a little piece off. Oh, just like that. Mmm. Ooh. Coffee rub. That, that really did it right there. That's so good right there. I think we got a successful video, guys. Big old beef ribs. Look at that baby right there. Looks so good. So good, so good to eat. We're gonna go ahead and chow down in these for dinner. I hope you enjoyed the video.
stay tuned for more future videos. Toothpicks. Mm, 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 mm. Mm.